everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Perry, also known as Books Aren't Boring, and today we're going to be talking about Old Man and the Sea. The title of the book pretty much explains the entire thing. It's an old man and the sea. Well, actually no, there is a man, a boy, the sea, and a fish. So the man's name is Santiago. He's been fishing for a while. He's a professional fisherman. He's been out to sea for the past 84 days, but he hasn't been able to get any fish, which is kind of weird considering he's a master fisherman. They even call him Salau, which means that he's really, really unlucky. Not the kind of unlucky that's like, oops, I bumped into this person five times a day and I don't want to see them. It's unlucky as in, oops, I accidentally raised an army of the undead unlucky. As I mentioned, there's a boy. His name is Manolin. He is in love with baseball and he was apprenticed to Santiago for a while and he technically still is but we don't really see that we only see that Manolin really cares for Santiago like a lot he takes care of him because Santiago's old and a little bit senile but he's still smart you'll see that later Santiago decides to go out to sea for the 85th day in a row because why not you know he's already really unlucky why not just go again and he actually finds a fish, like a big one. It's called a marlin and it's insanely huge. I can't really describe the proportions, but just know he's like driving a little boat thing. And the fish is like almost twice the size of the boat. So once he baits the marlin and like gets it next to his boat, you might think that's the end, but it's not, not even close. It's like a quarter through the book. So he carries the marlin and you know, it's a big fish, like, it pulls in every direction. It's kind of like trying to walk a huge dog. He ends up wrapping the line around his hand at one point and it ends up giving him cuts all over his hand, which becomes like a key point near the end because it causes him to like nearly black out from the pain. He finds some dolphin and like cuts up and eats the dolphin because, you know, it really do be like that sometime. Then he starts thinking about baseball, which is connected back to Manlin who he loves and supports, you know, father-son-ish relationship. And you're like, wait a minute, maybe that relationship is key to the story. Interesting. Then he gets religious for a second on page 67 um, of this book. I had a different copy when I read it in school, so obviously it's not going to be the same, but it probably should be around page 67. And I'm mentioning the page number because like the religious thing is kind of important. We had to do like a Socratic seminar for my school and I ended up asking a lot of questions about it. And basically it's kind of like Santiago isn't religious, but his wife is. But there's a lot of stuff in there also that's kind of like biblical allegory. So that's kind of what it means. So after sailing for a while, Santiago gets caught by a couple of sharks. Now there's like four or five sharks that come in in total, but the sharks are kind of like the defeaters of Santiago and the fish. Because even though Santiago the whole time was like, I'm gonna defeat this fish or this fish is gonna defeat me, in actuality, it's the sharks that defeat him. It's the outside force. So at first there's a couple sharks that come in, eat some meat off of the marlin, and Santiago's like, eh, it's fine, whatever. But then another shark comes, because the blood left over from the other sharks is like drawing them in and he tries to fend them off it doesn't really work and then more sharks come and by the end the marlin is basically nothing there's some of the head and some of the tail there's like an illustration in the version of the book that I had where it was like skeleton all the way across and then it was like tail and head on one end and that was it so basically Santiago got defeated once more but he wasn't technically unlucky anymore that's not a plot point that was just something I thought of. And then the man goes back home. Manolin takes care of him. For some reason, I thought at the end of this book that Santiago died, but rereading it, um, he didn't. So even though Santiago's death is never explicitly mentioned, it is kind of like alluded to throughout the book with like the death of the Marlin and kind of like the death of his pride a little bit. And even though as I said, Hemingway isn't like, yep, Santiago's dead at the end. It is kind of like, oh, well, he's been through so much and he's lost everything. It's kind of like you would assume that he's died. So since the story of this book is actually pretty short, let's just get straight into why this book isn't boring. 
So this isn't really part of why it is important, but it is basically Ernest Hemingway's like last work that was published. So it's really short, which leads into kind of why I like this book. It's nice to read because it's short. A lot of the books you'll have to read for school are like 300, 400 pages. And that's not nice, especially when you have to like work with all the other stuff that you have in school at the time. Sure, it doesn't directly have to do with the literary merit, but if you're hesitant about reading this book, just know that it's only like around 80 pages. So unless you're a super, super slow reader, and even if you are, it shouldn't take you an insane amount of time to read through the entire thing. So on to the more literary parts of this book. Now, two of the main themes are kind of the honor and inevitability of death, and then there's the whole like pride is his defeat thing. So even though on surface level, it's just about some guy trying to fish a fish, which isn't even that surface level because that's literally what it's about, just the inner monologue kind of shows those themes. It's like, okay, so even though this book is really short, and even only has a couple of plot points, it's still kind of like, whoa. Because Hemingway was really good at expressing ideas in really short amounts of time. So the whole honor and inevitability of death is kind of like more central than the pride thing because it's basically, even though he did, Santiago did everything to protect the Marlin, everything that he could considering he was dragging it along a boat next to him, he still got defeated by the sharks in the end. So the sharks are there to kind of like symbolize, hey, even though you've tried everything, we're still going to defeat you because that's the way of the universe. So Hemingway's book isn't necessarily about, you know, triumphing over death or anything like that. It's basically about, hey, sometimes you can't avoid it. But kind of the whole pride thing comes into play there's points in the book where Santiago starts talking about like how amazing the fish is and how amazing it is that he can catch it or that it will kill him or that he will kill it. And his pride ends up kind of getting the better of him because, you know, as he starts getting more injuries and the sharks hurt him, he sees, oh, maybe I've made some kind of mistake. But even though he sees that he's made some kind of mistake, he's like, I can't give up now, I have to keep going. And that's where all of the cuts on his hand and all of the issues that he ends up experiencing on the, in the end are because he was too prideful to let go while he still could. I kind of like when books have underlying messages, but not so much so that it's like impossible to see just by reading it. Like obviously if you actually read the book, you can kind of see the whole pride and inevitability of death thing. Also, side note, there's a whole dream of like lions on the beach and it's kind of confusing, but I can just explain it because it's really not that difficult. It's just there isn't a lot of backstory given to it. So the lions are not only a reminder of like his peaceful youth and Santiago wanting to be more at peace than he is. It's also about how life is a circle and all of that because it happens at the beginning, middle, and end of the book. So it's kind of a reminder that even though he might still be carrying the marlin around, it doesn't mean that it won't eventually succumb to the death via the sharks. See, Hemingway is okay at subtly, but also he's not that subtle in some places because he makes Santiago's narration very kind of obvious. It's not a perhaps I'll put in a little bit of imagery or symbolism. It's here Santiago's going to say something and be like, eh, eh. It's not not obvious. It's Pretty obvious is what I'm trying to say. I wouldn't say this book is a leisure read, but like if you were assigned this book for class, you probably aren't going to work on it for that long. So as long as you get the basic ideas down, don't even worry. Just know like the pride and death and inevitability of all that kind of stuff is really important and what makes the book interesting. If you just look at the book from the perspective of, oh, it's a guy going on the sea for like three days, and oops, he caught a fish, but oh no, it's dead now. And really, the book doesn't have much to it other than that. But still, if you get a little bit more out of the book than what it's initially saying on the surface, then you will find these kinds of books so much more interesting. Obviously, longer books have more to them and have bigger stories, like I'm gonna say, Brave New World was pretty interesting for me. 
personally. I'm not saying that you should find this entire book the most amazing thing you've ever read in your life, but you shouldn't find it the most boring thing you've ever read in your life either. So an entire summary of what I've said is there's a guy, he goes on a fishing trip, he gets a fish, then the fish dies because the cycle of death. The guy is too prideful to let go of the fish, so he drags the skeleton back to the shore. Then the motifs of the sharks and the lions on the beach and how those all impact the story and how those come together to create a well-formed, interesting story. Thank you so much for watching this video on Old Man in the Sea. If you want to see more content, just subscribe down below. Bye!